All right, module seven, part two, rate of change with equations and graphs. Now, in the box here, it says that there's a formula for rate of change. And it says the rate of change is equivalent to the change in the output over the change in the input. Now, that's the same as what we were doing with the slope formula, delta y over delta x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This formula looks more complicated than it is because of the function notation. All that that means is f of b, that's the function notation for y2. Right? That's your y2. This f of a is your y1. The b and the a are your x values, right? The a and the b right here. So don't get freaked out by the mathematical technical formula. All you're doing is when you're finding average rate of change is you're calculating the slope between two points. So, let's use the fancy formula, and then I'll show you a nicer way to do it. So consider that we have the function 2x squared minus 10. So we are going to find the rate of change over the interval um, for negative 2 to 3. Now that negative 2, that's like your a, and the 3 is the b. So our formula said we took f of b, which would be f of 3, minus f of a, which is negative 2, over b minus a. So over 3 minus negative 2. Alright, so we need to figure out what's f of 3 and f of negative 2. So let me use my function notation. f of 3. Well, I'm going to put 3 in for x in this original function. 2 times 3 squared minus 10. So 2 times 9, which is 18 minus 10, equals 8. So what I have here is 8 minus, I have to find the value of f of negative 2. So I do the same thing. I put negative 2 in for x. So it'll be 2 times 4, which is 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. So 8 minus negative 2 over the 3 minus negative 2. And when I simplify that, the negative minus the negative turns into a positive. I'll get 10 over 5, which equals 2. So the rate of change of the slope on that interval is 2. Now, this little box I have here says, that was a lot of work, right? I had to do function notation, then the slope formula. That took a lot of time. Let's make it faster. Let's use our graphing calculator to help us. So first of all, we're going to graph the function f of x. We're going to type it right into y equals. You don't have to change anything. Just type the equation 2x squared. Oops. 2x squared. Oh, I lost it. Minus 10. Now, when I look at the graph, it'll show me the picture. But let's go to the table. Because from my table, I have x's and y's. I can really easily find the ordered pairs that I need for this equation. I have the x of negative 2 and the x of 3. And notice that negative 2 here, I have the y value of negative 2, which should look familiar. Right? I had input of, or I'm sorry, input of negative 2, output of negative 2. That's my ordered pair. When I look at x equals 3 down here, I have the output of 8 which again looks like my input and my output. So if I can use my calculator to find those two ordered pairs, I could then put them, I'm not going to do it, but put them into that slope formula and I get the same answer, which is a lot faster. So when I try to part B over to the right, I'm going to use my calculator again. I'm going to use my calculator because it's faster than using the whole formula and function notation. So let's find the output, the ordered pair for x equals 5. I'm going to go here, I'm going to scroll down to 5 and get the output of 40. So I have the ordered pair 5, 40, and now I need to find the ordered pair for x equals 9. That's at 152. Well now, since I have two ordered pairs, Let's use the slope formula to find the rate of change. 152 minus 40 over 9 minus 5. That gives me 112 over 4, and 112 divided by 4 is 28. 
that would be the slope between those two points or the rate of change. That was a lot faster than doing all this function notation. All right, flip your paper over, you're almost done. Example two, similar kind of problem. Says two x squared plus 10 describes the height of a bouncy ball after it's been dropped on the ground. So we're gonna find the rate of change, how fast is the bouncy ball bouncing on these following time intervals. So again, I'm gonna start by using my calculator and type in 2x squared, or 2x, because we have to use x in our calculator, plus 6. Well, again, here's the picture of the graph, and we're going to go to the table. Now, we want the time interval here to start from 0 to 2. So at time equals 0, I have the height of 6 feet. So 0, 6 is my first ordered pair, and the next ordered pair is at 2, 14. When I do the slope formula, I'll take 14 minus 6 over 2 minus 0, which is 8 over 2, or 4. Now, in terms of the context of this problem, we're talking about height and seconds. So this is, I think, uh, feet, okay, feet per second. So that means the bouncy ball from 0 to 2 seconds is moving 4 feet per second. Now for B, I just need to find the two different order pairs. At 1, the height of the bouncy ball is 8. And at 4, it's 38. And again, I find the slope. 38 minus 8 over 4 minus 1. That'd be 30 over 3, which is 10. That means on the interval from 1 to 4, you're, the ball is moving 10 feet. Per second. Now, those are two different numbers. So, can the bouncy ball's height be passed with a straight line? The answer is no, because the rates are not the same. Rates are not constant. Okay, and you can see that by looking at the picture. The graph is not a straight line. So, it wouldn't fit. All right, one more. Have a table. Now, I'm going to do rate of change the exact same way. All I have to do is save some time. I find all the ordered pairs from the table. So on the interval from 5 to 19, I'm going to use these two ordered pairs. 5, 1, and 19, 22. So when I find the slope here, I'm going to take 22 minus 1 over 19 minus 5. That would be 21 over 14, which simplifies 3 goes into both of them. To three over, or sorry, seven goes into both of them to be three over two. Now the average rate of change from eleven to forty-five. I'm going to use these ordered pairs: eleven, ten, forty-five, sixty-one. So the slope here would be sixty-one minus ten over forty-five minus eleven. So fifty-one over thirty-four, which does actually simplify to 3 over 2. Since those are the same, I would say yes, this represents a linear function because the rate is the same or constant. Right, go ahead and give this a try. There's some practice on the bottom with tables and equations. You can also um, do, there's a mixed practice for lessons 1 and 2 on Canvas as well.